glad we persevered through the initial muddiness to look for this place. You can tell people come here, but it's definitely not marked. And so you definitely have to try a little bit. But once you get here, it's totally worth it. Hi, we're Yvonne and Jeremy, and we're slow traveling the world on a budget. Today, we go off the beaten path to check out some of Southern Georgia's lakes and canyons. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a brand new day and the final portion of our Georgian road trip. We're here on the Javaheti Plateau, specifically in the Butasheni Nature Preserve area around a lake where there's supposed to be more than 200 species of birds. Coming here, it just felt very foreign. We were on gravel roads. I don't think hardly any tourists come by here, but after driving, quite a distance away from what Google Maps suggested and wondering the whole time, are we going in the right direction or going in the right place? We've reached this beautiful lake where there's so many birds, you wouldn't believe it. So we're gonna just walk around the lake and enjoy this lakes region of the Javakheti Plateau. And I really wanna go closer to the lake, but we can't seem to find the path right now, but there was a worker that just came by to talk to us and he said there might be a path over there and there might be some cold water you can drink there too. So we're gonna go over there and check it out. So apparently the Javaheti Plateau was formed by volcanic activity a long time ago. And this lake here, Lake Bukdasheni, is an important breeding ground for many birds, but it's never very deep. Deepest that it ever gets is less than one meter deep. And so it's actually a pretty shallow lake. It's fullest in May, driest in February. And between February and May, there's a ton of rain that comes down and waters this area. This elevated shack is just made out of plywood and planks of wood, but it just allows you to sit here quietly while you bird watch. In the center of the Bugdasheni Lake, there's this island with some dead trees, which is an important nesting ground for a lot of birds. So we're gonna sit here quietly and see if we can't spot a few birds from this little lookout point. birds here for an hour but they finally come back and they're getting closer and closer I'm not completely sure if I have the patience to be a birder, but it's definitely fascinating just sitting here in obscurity and watching them move and fly and just how they live around this lake. That was a fascinating bird watching time at Bugdasheni Lake. Now we're heading back on this gravel road to the next lake to see what we can see there. So we've driven down another gravel road next to Madatapa Lake, which is a very, very large lake. But there are some houses here and we're pretty close to the border with Armenia. And we honestly have no idea where we are. We are pretty far off the beaten path today.
we're walking on the banks of the lake and it seems like everywhere we go, it smells like manure. We can't tell if this is private property or if this is a path, but we're walking towards the lake and it seems like this is another sanctuary as well because there's a little island in the middle of the lake with a ton of birds. We also see a lot of different farm animals around us. So we're gonna just walk around and take a look. Wow, the Maratapa Lake is pretty large and there are a lot of different farm animals around it. We see birds flying back and forth and feeding and it's just a very idyllic and peaceful place. <laughs> yeah, not, not sure if you can see them in the camera, but there are a whole bunch of bugs just flying above Yuan's head. If you have a car, you can drive around this area and just look at the different lakes and the natural beauty. And there are very few people here as well. So this has been a really, really relaxing part of our road trip so far. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a brand new day. This morning, we are headed to the Dashvasha Canyon, which is a day trip away from Tbilisi, but we're coming from the other side. So we've seen a few glimpses of the canyon so far, and we're gonna go check out what we can see from this angle. There are some very touristed areas, but we've come to a nearby church where there aren't a lot of people. So hopefully this is a good place to go. waterfall ever. This is a pretty big canyon. I was definitely not expecting to see this when we woke up and drove over here this morning and it is actually quite lush and green and not too deep. It's very very scenic and beautiful. This is the view from the street and you pretty much can't tell that the canyon is there until you walk right up to it really really commercialized this area in the last few years and now they're charging 49 lari to go in on their bridge and just to enter onto all these walkways. I think we decided that it's not a good use of money so I think we will just walk around. See what we can see without paying. Earlier when we drove all the way up we actually had a pretty good viewpoint of the waterfall already. This area is just so heavily touristed. They're actually building a resort here so yeah, there are a lot of cars and a lot of marshrikas here. It's just a shame that they commercialize and monopolize this area with this bridge that kind of disrupts the, the pure nature of it. I think a much more modest price without this man-made bridge would make this experience a lot nicer. If you don't go right after it rains, going up to the St. George Church is a great free way to go view the canyon without paying this entrance fee. I do feel like it's been a little bit too commercialized. That kind of spoils some of the charm, but nevertheless, it was worth a quick stop. And now we're headed to another canyon, the Bishtasheni Canyon. So Google Maps hasn't been great to us, so we're stopped by the side of the road and looking for the Beshtasheni Canyon now. We can kind of see glimpses of it, but we're not really sure how to get there. And this is definitely also off the beaten path. In the distance, we can see the Tsalka Reservoir, really big with beautiful hills and clouds behind it. The Beshtasheni Canyon was very, very different. It's a lot smaller than the Dashbashi Canyon, but it's also very, very beautiful. And there's a nearby waterfall, actually a quite impressive waterfall. And there's nobody out here except a bunch of horses. Actually, we got lost a few times. I slid through the mud. It's best to come when it's drier, maybe not when it's just rained, but it's really, really beautiful and peaceful here. Jeremy and 
I split off, he went ahead to just go down the canyon and went through all the mud and slush. I'm not wearing my hiking shoes today, so I decided that it's probably not good. The grassy parts are pretty dry, so I'm trying to go down just walking on grass. We'll see if I can find a path. Oh, I'm starting to see the falls now. It's really pretty. This is really hidden. There's like no path going down. Wow, this is awesome. Oh, there's Jeremy. Hey, we're reunited. This is truly a hidden gem. I'm glad we persevered through the initial muddiness to look for this place. You can tell people come here, but it's definitely not marked. And so you definitely have to try a little bit. But once you get here, it's totally worth it. Wow, that was an unexpected hidden gem, but also the perfect way to finish up our time here in Georgia. We're driving back now to Tbilisi to hand off our rental car and head to the airport. But wow, Georgia is such a treat in so many different ways and we can't wait to come back here. We're already making plans to come back here. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. See you in the next one.